All right, well, I got my uh, video camera slash iPhone out. I figured I'd make just one more real quick video, uh, just kind of giving an overview of my uh, heat treating oven I made. Uh, probably nothing too detailed, as that would uh, probably take a little bit more than I'd like it to, but uh, just wanted to kind of show what I did here a little bit. Uh, I got some soft fire brick uh, from a local uh, refractory. He had some, the owner had some leftovers I was able to buy from him for a pretty good price. Uh, went ahead and used a 3000 watt canthal wire element. Uh, just carved out the bricks, uh, stretched that out, put it in there. Uh, it's attached to two stainless steel bolts in the back there. It's a little hard to see. But uh, I think I got about 16 inches deep. Uh, maybe like four and a half by six and a half or something. I forget the exact dimensions, but uh, definitely big enough for most uh, average sized blades, even a little bit larger ones. Uh, I also went ahead and uh, even though I mortared all these bricks together, uh, I wanted to leave it accessible in case I ever had to change the element out. So instead of mortaring the top portion to the bottom, uh, I went ahead and left it loose and just put some uh, ceramic fiber insulation, kind of a gasket around the middle, and then I went ahead and wrapped the whole thing just to kind of buffer the heat, hold it in there, uh, maybe a little bit better. Uh, I plan on making a shell uh, to encase this whole thing and then one for the door that'll then hinge uh, in place and I got a toggle latch and all that some hinges to put that together I just need to fabricate a shell for it eventually and then uh, I've actually got some pretty detailed plans drawn up uh, they're almost complete aside from obviously making the shell and then uh, maybe one day I'll have those uh, for you guys uh, just kind of showing what I did and how I did it. Uh, got the control box here. Again, like my electric etcher in my other video, I just used a larger Radio Shack project box. Uh, I got a little temperature controller uh, off the internet. Got some uh, power lights. Uh, so toggle switches, there's the uh, 220, it's actually a dryer cord I use to power this thing. Uh, this is a 220 volt element. Uh, you got the uh, two 110 lines coming out, the black and white, uh, that's a 220 supply. And here's the uh, thermal couple which is actually uh, in the top here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, it's right there in the back in the top middle. I know it's a little bit dark, but uh, that's where I ended up sticking my thermocouple. Uh, I just got this uh, outlet running straight into my sub panel. Uh, flip that breaker on and kind of power this on. Uh, there's a bunch of different settings and things you can do with this controller uh, right now all I've done with it is uh, you know increase and decrease temperature uh, theoretically this should go up to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, that's what all the insulation and fire bricks rated for as well as the element and the thermocouple so uh, it should hold 2300 before it disintegrates uh, right now we're just reading room temperature uh, this is the power switch. I got a switch for the heating element to turn that on and off because uh, this element is actually a live voltage when it's heating. So you don't want to be sticking, you know, any tongs or knife blades in there and contacting that element and uh, shorting across that uh, while it's heating because you'll get that uh, 220 uh, biting you in the butt. So went ahead and made a disconnect for that uh, for when I open the door. Uh, right now my door is just uh, 
slab of fire brick and some insulation to help hold the heat in. Uh, like I said, uh, eventually I'll mount that to a shell. Uh, I think I'm going to go with 16 gauge sheet metal. Uh, nothing too fancy. I just need to get someone who can uh, bend that for me and then I can put something together. I have some ideas for a real simple shell. I'll go ahead and turn this on. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the elements heating up there. They kind of buzz a little bit. But, uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go over a couple more things. Uh, this is some uh, just some pin and staple wire, I believe they call it. I use that to uh, form some little hooks and pins to uh, hold your uh, element in there. You can kind of see some uh, right by the bends. Uh, that just keeps it from popping out. Uh, I got a soft fire brick in there. Uh, I set some knives on. Uh, as you can see, it starts heating up pretty fast. Uh, already at 110 degrees. Uh, we can go ahead and open this top up in the meantime. Kind of show you uh, the wiring. Not too terribly difficult. Uh, I got a couple uh, fuse holders in the back. Uh, a little dusty, but I got a fuse for the heating element, and then I got one for the uh, temperature controller. Uh, just in case, you never know. And then uh, got a solid state relay in there. Uh, that's what controls the switching on and off of the heating element. Uh, which you got the low voltage side tied to the controller and the high voltage is obviously tied directly to the 220. And then uh, that SSR is uh, connected to a heat sink because those things get real hot and if they don't have a proper heat sink they'll self-destruct and then you'll end up shorting out your heating element and it's a big mess but uh, that's pretty much that uh, nothing too complicated I just wanted to give a quick overview not go into too much detail uh, eventually like I said I'll get some plans together I've already been working on those uh, I got quite a bit of detail into those already but uh, you can see this uh, glowing pretty good now. Maybe see the inside a little better. Uh, see how I routed that. Uh, there you can see the thermal couple sticking out of the rear a little better. But uh, I've used this a couple times to nail some files and just messing around uh, with some mild steel and stuff. And it'll definitely get it red hot. Uh, already up to 400 degrees. Uh, heats up quite a bit faster than your normal uh, kitchen oven that you bake your pizzas and chicken wings in. I don't know if I'd bake anything in there but uh, maybe one day I'll try that out. <laughs> Again I added some uh, neon lights just to show when power was on and off from the element and the controller. Uh, maybe a little more advanced than that uh, electric etcher and the grinder, but it was a fun project. Uh, definitely enjoyed building it, enjoy using it. Hopefully I'll uh, get it all wrapped up into a neat little package uh, one, one day soon. Uh, kind of been putting that off. I need to find a sheet metal fabricator that can uh, bend me some metal up to my specifications or maybe I should just run a break and get it over with. But go ahead and shift that back off. Well, that's that. Have a good night.